Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey. Hey, welcome to FC. Glad y'all are here. Uh, first off, did somebody leave a Bible? Uh, uh, you're oh, right. Oh, no, it's James. There you go. There you go, James. Awesome. You got a new case. Yeah. Okay. Hey, listen up, everybody. We got a few announcements before we get started tonight. Yeah, announcements. Make sure you're listening because announcements don't make any sense if you don't listen. So listen so you get all the announcements so you know all the information so you know what to do when you need to do it and then you can do it whenever you're supposed to do it. All right, here we go. First off, you all right over there? Yeah. Okay. So first off, if you haven't signed up for Remind to get the text so you know what's going on, make sure you do that. Turn to your neighbor and say, what, Soto? Do you have Remind 101? Do you have if Remind If not, help them sign up. Yeah, help sign up. If you need help, there is a poster on the door on your way out. You can sign up. That way you know what we're eating, what we're playing, what we're talking about. And you would have heard that tonight was Chick-fil-A O'Night. Hey. Woohoo! All right. Also, you can follow us on social media, Instagram, and if you're over the age of 35, Facebook. Or MySpace if you have it. Uh, yeah. Who's going to be in our top eight on MySpace? You don't even know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> I still look at it every now and then. Awesome. Hey, guys, remember, we got T-shirts for sale in the back. So on your way out, if you haven't grabbed a T-shirt, $10, that's it. $10, you get yourself some awesome FC swag. Who's wearing a T-shirt tonight? Nathan's hey. got one on. Hey, Nathan, give us a spin. There it is. There it is. Awesome. Kelly, you got one, too? You got yours on? Nice, nice FC swag. Hey, make sure you grab your shirt on your way out if you haven't got one already. Hey, guys. Um, Soto, I think we have something big coming up pretty soon. Maybe in the month of March. What is it? What is it, guys? I can't hear you. Do now. Do now. Hey guys, make sure if you haven't signed up, tonight is the last night to get the early bird pricing of just $25. Just $25. Just $25. The price goes up to $50 after tonight, so make sure if you haven't signed up, sign up. Yeah, that helps us know how many t-shirts we need to order, so get signed up. $25 for the whole weekend. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a great weekend. And also, tonight we're announcing to you guys, but we've already told your parents that... That same weekend on Saturday, we're going to have a parent D now conference in the morning. So we're going to have something for your parents as well. So there you go. And there's this for free. <laughs> it's the opposite. They're paying for you, so it doesn't matter. All right. It's a two for one special for them. And lastly, remember we got live groups on Sunday morning. So this is just the beginning. Thank you for coming tonight, but we want you to get plugged in, not just to our student ministry on Wednesday night, but get plugged into our church uh, where you can make uh, relationships and grow in community together as we continue to learn God's word together. So with that being said, uh, we are going to start off with prayer, and then our worship team is going to come up and lead us. So Soto, would you pray for us? Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you that you brought us all here, Lord. I pray that you would um, just settle our hearts, Lord, that we would be able to focus on you during worship and um, worship in spirit and truth, God. And I pray that you would speak through both couples tonight, God, that we would just get a, a, an amazing picture of what it looks like to, to love each other, um, and, and specifically in the context of a marriage, but in relationships. Um, and I thank you for, for both the couples, God. I Thank you for you using them and pray that it would bring you glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Dear Lord, thank you for all just bringing us here and worshiping you. And I pray as Michael comes and speaks, um, what he says and maybe like a heart to heart to you and bringing you closer to him. And I pray that we'll all just have a good rest of the night and a good day tomorrow at school. Hey, well, welcome everybody to the first ever edition of FC Live Live. <laughs> I'd like to uh, welcome our guests tonight. We have the McGuire's. And we have the Dozier's with us. So we're, we're excited. What we're going to do tonight is, as some of you guys already know, tonight we're calling it chick fil a -O night. You got to eat Chick-fil-A, so that was, that was the first bonus. Uh, but word phileo is a Greek word for love. And it's the, it's the brotherly love that happens, uh, the sisterly love that happens over time as you get to spend time with one another. Uh, so what I want to do tonight is invite these two couples tonight to come join us and talk about their lives a little bit with you and also share about how they have learned to love one another uh, throughout their years of being married. Yeah. So, I, so I did the math. Combined on stage is over 100 years of marriage. Yeah. So. yeah. They'll be 58. Uh, yeah, I know. And I'm almost, I'll, I'll, me, and, me and Hannah almost have seven, so there you go. We've lasted that long. That's good. All right, well, what I want to do is I just want to kind of pass it over, and I'm just going to kind of ask questions, and, and they, they know what I'm asking, so there are no surprises. Right. <laughs> They're like, please, no surprises. Uh, but uh, just kind of get to hear their story a little bit. So we'll start with the McGuire's. If you guys would just kind of tell us a little bit about yourselves, your story, uh, maybe your testimony, if you want to add that in there and, and go from there. But start off. We, uh, we're, we're from uh, Sweetwater, Texas. Uh, Brenda, Brenda grew up there. Uh, I aged chronologically there. Growing up is an option, and I decided not to do that. So, so I, it actually, it's my age that tricks you into thinking I'm an adult. Uh, but that's, we both, uh, we grew up in the same church. Uh, our families knew each other. Uh, in fact, we met in church. Uh, I, uh, our, ours, ours was actually an arranged marriage. Uh, you know, some countries do that. <laughs> no, it really was. My mom and dad arranged it. Say, hey, Brenda, do we need to get you your own microphone so you could just counter everything that he says? No, my, my mom and dad arranged it. They, they would have been devastated if I hadn't married Brenda. So uh, they, they sort of, uh, with her, manipulated us into it. But it was great. It did, yeah. Well, <laughs> the, people always ask you how in the world, uh, she, at our 50th wedding anniversary, they asked Brenda, how did you put up with Bud for 50 years? And she said, well, it was only 25. He was gone half the time. <laughs> so, and I, I was, I worked in the oil and gas business. So I, I was a lot away from home. But, and people ask us, ask me, you know, how, how can you stay happily married for 58, 58 years? And I said, it's really very easy. Uh, there's four rules to long time happy marriage. My four rules. Uh, it's my job to put money in the bank. It's her job to take money out of the bank. Uh, Brent, 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 Brenda is always right. And it's always my fault. Uh, and, and the only the only time we 
the only time we've ever had any problems is if I temporarily forget one of the rules. Uh, uh, just be serious for a minute. I, I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, I, I, I trust the Lord at uh, a very early age and, and have uh, been involved in, in, in church and going to church and doing the things ever since I was a small boy. So for me, I don't really have a sort of dramatic salvation experience. I was very fortunate uh, to, to have grown up in that environment. And, and the Lord's blessed us enormously. But I want to let Brenda tell you her story about being born again. It's really dramatic, okay? It doesn't always work that easy, though. I grew up in a Christian home, too. But I didn't accept the Lord at a very early age. I was 14 before I had a very interesting, interesting, very traumatic experience. And it tended to turn me the other way. But I had a friend, a very dear friend. She was more like a sister who was a very good Christian, and she witnessed to me every day in some way. And I knew that there was something missing in my life. It just wasn't peaceful in my heart. But I could look at Robbie and see her peace and see that she really had something I didn't have. And she told me every day, she says, I have the Lord. And... Yet, I just couldn't make that decision. But when we were 14, on the Friday before Labor Day, I was going home with Robbie to the country where she lived. And we had three days out in the country, and the weather was beautiful, and it was just going to be great. We were all excited. Came out of the school building, was standing under an oak tree, waiting for a school bus. And I had gotten there early so that I could get the prized position of having a space to lean against that tree. And Robbie came out and we were talking and I was teasing her about her current boyfriend. And she shoved me away from that tree. I mean, literally shoved me away from the tree and got my place. Two days later, I woke up in the hospital room, cold, scared, and blind. I didn't know what had happened, but shortly the doctor came in, and he sat down on the side of my bed, and he told me that lightning had struck that tree and that the three girls leaning against that tree had been killed. Robbie had a hole, he said, from her neck to the bottom of her foot where the lightning had gone through her body. And I could not believe that this had happened. I couldn't believe that God had let that happen because I should have been the person leaning against that tree. It should have been me, not Robbie. And I went for about two years. I was mad at God. I could not believe that he would do that to Robbie, who was such a child of his. But then one night in the church service, God spoke to me. And I don't even remember what the pastor was preaching about, but I remember that something he said touched me. And it was the fact that God cared enough to give some people a second chance. And Robbie had died that I had, could have that second chance. And I could not let that go unheeded. And I accepted God as my Savior. And to this day, I am looking forward to seeing Robbie again and hugging her neck because she took my place against that tree. But now, I don't have that uneasy feeling inside. 
I have the peace that she had. And every day with God gets more beautiful. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Well, Betty, why don't we jump over to you? I think they covered two questions. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, my mom and dad divorced when I was three. And the amazing thing, well, there are a lot of amazing things, but one of the amazing things is I remember the night that my mother and my big brother and I moved back to my grandmother's house, and that's where someone offered us a home. Had they not opened the door to us, I don't know where we would have gone. We had no money, and that's how I was raised, with very little money. However, God provided in every way, just like he did an amazing thing here. He did an amazing thing in my life, but it's so very different. Because I didn't have a father who lived in the home with us, I really wanted a father very much. My dad tried for all the years of my growing up to be a father to me from a distance, but I didn't like him, so I wouldn't accept him. Now, I, I just jump years and tell you God took care of that before my dad died. He did not let me let my dad do without this daughter for all of his life. God convicted me of the fact that I was carrying some terrible things about my dad. Okay, back to, I wanted a father so very much. And my mama said that I used to sit on the front row at church. And mama sang in the choir. My mother went back to her little town because divorce was a very unusual thing. I wouldn't even say what year it was, but it was a few years ago. And my mama was so brave, she went right back to church. She jumped right into everything. And I would sit on the front row, and Mama said, I actually, my face would move with everything that the pastor said. Guys, I had such a longing in my heart for Jesus that I don't even know when I opened the door and said, please come in and take over this life and do whatever you want to do in this life. And... For those years, in my growing up years, he did some amazing things. I was kind of a wallflower, and I don't think you guys know that a wallflower, you go to parties and dances and no one invites you, and I would just sit by the wall. And for a lot of years, that's kind of the person I was. But then God gave me a spark and said, wake up, that's enough of that. And he really set me on fire for a long time. Now, I'm going to move to when I'm, no, first I have to tell his story, don't I? Art grew up in a somewhat of a Christian home, but not the same way that I did. My entire family loved the Lord Jesus, and becoming a Christian was almost like breathing to me. I had the father, and then I got the son. So I had the Savior who made everything work for me. Art did go to Sunday school and church, and as a teenager, he was babysitting cousins one night. And he said that he, I've heard him tell his testimony several times. I wish that he could tell you. There are some other things I wish he could tell you too. But he was so lonely after he got all the kids to bed, and his grandmother had just died shortly before that. So that was the time he said that because of all that was going on, especially the loss of his grandmother, that he just prayed and asked God to set him free from everything that he needed to be set free from. And you can't say this about a lot of people, but I've lived with this man for many years, and I've seen in action a living, breathing man filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Now, this is my favorite story of all stories, and that is how I met this fellow. I was finishing college in South Georgia, a little bitty college called Valdosta State College. I was studying to be a teacher, and Art came to Valdosta to Moody Air Force Base to learn how to be a pilot for the Air Force. Um, Men on bases are always checking out whatever girls there are in town, especially if there's a college there. The girls are always interested until they, uh, but they're not going to do anything about dating anybody from the base, or I wasn't until I got finished 
dating boys at the college because once you dated a military person, you were finished at college. So anyway, this is really a neat story. Art and some of his friends wanted to meet girls and they really had their heads on straight because they went to church to find a girl. And the morning that they went, I sang a solo. I wish I could remember what that solo was, but I just that's one of the few memories that have gone from my brain. And they came back by the college because there was enough there that they were interested. And they asked the people in my dorm at the, you know, keep it deck that day to tell them a little bit about me, which they did. And that week, it wasn't Art who called me. It was his roommate. And because I'd never dated a, a, my fella from the base, the base baby, I was a little hesitant, so I told him he could meet me at church the next week, and I would let him bring me back to the college, and we'd talk about it. Well, the best part of the story is that I said, yes, I would go to the officers' club with him. Get ready, y'all. This is truly wonderful. It was fine-tingling to me. Um, I went out with this Alan. Oh, my, that was the only time I ever thought about going out with him. But we were sitting at a table in the officers' club, and the door opened just right in front of me. I know you boys don't believe this, but I was almost breathless. Art had on a brown turtleneck, and oh. I was like, wow, wow. So Art and, Art and his friend came in and kind of just drove Alan away from the table, and we had deep conversation that night. That week, Art called me and asked me out, and it was on forever from then. I was so in love. And I don't know if he was as much so as I was, but it didn't matter because God had a plan for us. Art told me several years later, after we, we really had a great time because I was finishing college, so we got to do some college stuff together. But Art told me after we had been married several years that one of those nights when I was still in college and he was still learning how to fly airplanes, we were walking around on the campus and he said that night, he said, Lord, this one may be the one you've chosen for me. If it is, I open my heart to you right now for her. Now, is that exciting? Not every girl gets that kind of blessing. Okay, I did numbers one and two. <laughs> so we're, these are teenagers. It's um, part, part of the deal there. But um, for most of them, marriage is something, well, hopefully should be something distant. Uh, looking forward in their lives, but even though it's something that should be in the future, it's also something that they can be preparing for now. So what are some things, we'll, we'll start over here with you guys, some of the things that growing up, that as, as you were growing up and thinking and, and growing yourself as you were growing in Christ, some of the things that you did to get ready for marriage in the future? Well, I think... Uh... It's not anything we thought about at that stage. In our era, it was sort of expected. You grew up, you would get married, you would have a family, and uh, be like your mom and dad. And it's just the normal thing to do. My, my preparation for marriage was really uh, how my dad treated my mom. Well, I don't know that I did any preparation for marriage. I guess my mom did some preparation for my marriage. She made me cook and clean house and wash dishes and all those yucky stuff. <laughs> but I don't know that I did any preparation for marriage, but I can give you one tip maybe that Choose your friends wisely. You never know when you're going to fall in love. Yeah. Make sure that the friends that you choose have the same value system you do. Yeah. 
Yeah, if people ask us what you know, what forms the basis for, for a marriage, a good marriage, if you don't have shared values, it's extremely difficult, if not impossible, to have a successful marriage. There's an old country western song that says that's looking for love in all the wrong places. Okay, you, you look for love in all the right places. It's like Brendan and I, Brendan and I met at church. I, I was sitting there beside my sister. <laughs> In church, and uh, they'd moved in from the country, and uh, it was first Sunday they came to our church. I saw her walk in the back, in the front of the church, which was behind us. You know, I saw her, her finally walk in, and I, and, I, and I turned to my sister and I said, "I got to meet that girl." <laughs> so that's a good place to meet the right people is in church. Look for love in the right places. Shared values. Shared values. So, make sure if, like right now, as you're preparing and you're looking and, and kind of seeking those things out, you can grow with the friendships that you have right now in Christ. And, and as you're as you're thinking about these things and, and in the future when this is going to happen, like if Bud said, just uh, if, you, if you're not looking for somebody with the same values or someone that doesn't know Christ, it's going to be really hard to walk alongside with them uh, because they're going to be going in a different direction. Their heart's in a different place. Uh, so definitely. And then, I, I mean, you know, look for examples, whether that's your parents. Uh, if you see them have a, a good, healthy marriage, awesome. You know, look, look for what they do. See how they interact with each other. Uh, if maybe what you see at home isn't so healthy, find other people to, to step in and be that example. Yeah. I, I just want one last thing. My, my dad my dad was the greatest man that ever lived. Absolutely the greatest man that ever lived. And uh, he, uh, the day before we got married, <laughs> the day before we got married, he, he said, Bud, there's two things that you got to know. Said, okay, Dad, what's that? He said, number one, that girl is as stubborn as you are. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, and, and number two, if I ever hear of you mistreating her, you'll answer to me. And I was 20 plus years old at the time, but I still feared my dad. <laughs> well, Betty, how about you? What, are, what is some advice that you would have for teenagers as they are preparing now, maybe for that, that future time when they enter marriage? Well, I want to give you some advice. The very same advice that was given to me while I was in high school, I was involved in an organization called Try High Why. I don't even think it exists anymore. But then again, a lot of the things that we had back then don't exist anymore. And what I'm going to tell you is a whole different ballgame today than it was back then. We went to a camp at a wonderful place that was in the woods, kind of in a hilly area. It was just a place young people always loved to go. But it was a very serious uh, weekend also. We had a pastor who preached for us that weekend. Now, I'm telling y'all, this was a few years ago. And I remember it as if it were right this minute. I can hear his voice saying those things he said. When he talked, first of all, about what we were going to do with our lives, three big questions. What are you going to do about God? What kind of job are you going to have? And who are you going to spend your life with? Well, I already knew the first one. I thought I was leaning towards the second one, and I had absolutely no idea on the third one because I really never did date anybody very long. I didn't like them after about the third date until him. Anyway, uh, but then he got even more serious. And I, this has stuck with me all these years. I mean, he all but got in our faces when he shared this. He said, when you are dating, first of all, you hold hands. And it is fun. It is fun. It is a lot of fun. So just holding hands. But after a little while, you think, well, if that's fun, I think I can think of something else that might be even a little more fun. So you move on and maybe a little hug, maybe a little kiss. And he went on. 
And he really got serious with us. And he said, make up your minds now. Which route you're going to take. So how did I prepare for marriage? One of the ways that I beg you to prepare. Make a commitment that when you do marry, you have the most precious gift that you alone can give that person you're marrying. No one else can give that gift. And I know how smart y'all are. You know exactly what I'm talking about. But wait a minute, there was a little thought running through my mind. Oh, yes, this is it. I was reading today about how God can redeem us from every situation that we have, can get ourselves in. He can redeem us from it. So even if you've gone past those first few steps and you're already knowing that I'm walking all over your toes right now, don't talk to anybody but God about it. But be open and honest because I'll tell you something. There is nothing like a one-time relationship for 58 and 59 years, right? So go for that, okay? I learned the same things Brenda did about cooking, so by the time we married, I did know a little bit about cooking. I think we were both prepared. We both longed for a marriage for children, and we longed for it to be based on Christ. And that's also a commitment that only you can make. So I, I want to I want to jump. Y'all kind of answered the. I think you knew from the beginning that you were like in the very heart from your story. Oh, well, you going to ask when did we know that we could we were going to get married? Yeah, what did you know? You already started with me. Sure. Started the, okay, okay, okay. This is fun too because Art was learning to be a pilot, and I graduated from college. I went back to my little hometown of Bainbridge, Georgia which was 90 miles from where he was. So when, once I went back, he would come back and forth on the weekends. Of course, he was a fly baby during the weeks, and then on the weekend he would come and be with me. Well, we both were getting to the point that summer after my senior year that we just we couldn't stand the thought of this only being a courtship. So one night, this fellow, romantic as he is, said to me, well, you know, I think we're going to get married. What do you think? That was it. That was my proposal. And the, he had flown a little airplane over from the air base over to my hometown that weekend. So he took, my, my mother took us back out to the base. And this is the rest of it. Driving back out to the base, he said, Mrs. Pace, I believe I'm going to have to take your daughter from you. That was the whole thing. From then on, we married, We planned a marriage. But, yeah, that was good. <laughs> what about y'all, too? What did you know that she was the one, that he was the one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, like I said, my mom and dad knew before I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> it's true. I, I was I was in college. I was I was uh, studying engineering at Latona University. She was back home in Sweetwater after having decided that college wasn't for her. She'd been down at Brownsville at Howard Payne for what a year, and uh, so this was like 350 miles apart my hometown to where I was going to school and in those days that was like an eight, ten hour drive, you know. I didn't have any money to get there anyway, nor a car to drive. I hated riding the Greyhound bus. But uh, I uh, I really just didn't want to think about uh, life without Brenda. You know, just got to that point. <laughs> And I was like uh, eight to ten hours away, and, and, and Brenda was living in Sweetwater, and I was living in Longview, and and I probably would have wanted maybe to wait a little while longer before I made that commitment, but there she was at hometown with, with 
with all those guys we grew up with. They were there and I wasn't. <laughs> I said, I can't take a chance. <laughs> so that's, I, I, that's when I said, but I, you better pop the question. Ask Brenda if she'll marry you. And I, I, I think I knew, I knew what the answer was going to be. But, you know, what, what really uh, made, made my mind up was I, I knew, I knew that no matter what, Brenda would always love her. He wasn't joking about his mom and dad. <laughs> Every Sunday after church, they took me out to lunch. <laughs> he was a long way away. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time with him while he was away at college. And I knew that he would eventually come to the point. But uh, he just had to make up his own mind. So he really... It really was, and it's been a great, great 58 years. It's been an easy 58 for me. You married to Brenda, that's the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> it's been hard for her. <laughs> Not really like he says he was gone half the time. It was just me and the girls. <laughs> All right. Well, let me let me jump back over to you. We're doing uh, number six. I'll, I'll ask it. Let me get. So, I think both of y'all have. I mean, over fifty-eight years plus, uh, life will throw difficult situations at us. Um, I know just in seven years, we can and have had little bumps and things that we've had to work through. Uh, so, maybe. Like I said, tonight's Chick-fil-A night is about learning how to love each other over that time. Uh, and not just, you know, love, but like, but really sacrificial, caring for one another love. So maybe what's something that you could say as far as something you've learned and how to love during the difficult situations? I think the saddest thing of living with dementia is that I don't have that wisdom coming from my right. This gentleman was so wise. He could fly those big airplanes. He refueled from a KC-135. You know, he really did a lot of big stuff that, cost, that he had to use his brain for. But he was wise in applications. His, one of his wisest things, and this is very good for a whole thought across the board, he said, we are not going to jump out of an airplane without a parachute and ask God to save us. Do y'all get that? I've applied that all the way, and, I, and I'm still applying it right now because I won't do things that are challenging God as far as taking care of the situation that we live in now. But let me see if this one, this is all about, so I can move into our life now at this point. Okay. All right, I told y'all I loved him, didn't I? Now, Carrie has a picture for us. I don't know that she's going to show it to you. But in this picture, if you get a chance to see it, do you see my eyes? Do you see adoration? I mean, just look at it. It's that love just oozing out of me, going over to him. Guys, I was so proud to be married to a pilot, but much more so to be married to this man. He is truly, truly my hero. Y'all have a handkerchief? <laughs> Sarah, do you have a handkerchief? Um... I am more proud of him now. Not, Not for me, me, for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I do my crying. I am more proud of Art Dozier to now than I was on that day. It was 20, more than 20 years ago when he flew um, Continental Airlines for the very last time as a captain. 
but it was, that was wonderful. And you probably think this lady has lost her mind that she can say life is good and I adore this man. As much as I did that night, he walked through that door. And I said, when he walked through the door, you know there's a song that says that. And I felt it. I just felt it. And my whole life I felt it. My college friends used to say, that man is not going to be good for you. And I said, oh, yes, he is. Well, we've now been on this journey for more than 10 years. Not, not here, but if you've lived with anybody with dementia, you know anyone, the journey changes day by day. But I'm telling y'all, I'm so proud of all. I've never seen a person go through this kind of journey with the grace that he has. He's kind every single day. He's kind to every single person. When someone does something for him, to the very best he's able to do, he says, thank you. So, all of those years that we've been married, Art taught me two, oh, taught me so many things just out of his wisdom. One of his biggies was always, everyone is either a taker or a giver. And y'all probably heard this, right? And we have come to believe that givers are graced by God to be givers. And they're that way their whole life unless something horrible happens. Takers, Run from them as fast as you can run, unless God gets hold of them. And God can make can change anything. Y'all know that He can, and He can make a taker, the biggest giver that there ever has been. Um, Art used to counsel a lot with people who were having trouble in their marriage, and you can tell just from this couple of things I've said. He knew how to get right to it, right to whatever the, the situation was, and encourage the, um, an application to the problem that would work. And it was always, seek ye first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these other things will be added unto you. And that's what we found in our marriage. Now, have I told you that I love him? I wonder if I've told him lately that I love him. Every day. Every day. How about you guys? Uh, maybe what's, what's something that you guys have learned about learning how to love each other during the difficult times? Okay. Uh, well, um, firstly, I want to tell you about the, the dumbest question that a... Um, reporter ever ask anybody on television, okay? There was a uh, reporter interviewing Donald Trump during the campaign, and, and he asked Donald the dumbest question you can imagine. He said, Donald, what first attracted you about Melania? <laughs> now, <laughs> and Trump just looked at him. <laughs> I was like, are you crazy, guy? And he said, oh, uh, besides the fact that she was a supermodel. So, you, you know, Brenda hates this story, but it's a great story. Is it? Because it's the same thing, you know. Somebody, what, what, first, what, first, what first attracted you uh, uh, to Brenda? I said, well, what do you think? I was a teenage boy, and she had a body to die for. I mean, what? <laughs> But, but that's just, that's just, the, you know, that, that's a, the superficial part. You, you really then grow from there to a really true love. And today, she's more beautiful today than the day we married. <laughs> uh, we really, she, she is. And we, we lived outside the States for 20 plus years, 22 years in, in, in some different places in the oil and gas business, and, and uh, there were many, many things that, that we were called on to do that you normally wouldn't in, in, uh, if you were living here. Uh, just a lot of things, I won't try to go into those, but, but it's, uh, it's those things that 
bring you together and you, you learn from each other, you trust each other, and you realize that the greatest thing about growing in this love is a strong, strong, stronger love than, than anything you started out with. Anything. I mean, it comes from uh, the companionship, uh, the teamwork, uh, it, it, it takes a real team to raise a family, and, and particularly in, in, in the environment we were in, because my job required an enormous amount of me, and, and Brenda just took care of the home front. That was that was her territory, her job. That's, so we made it, we made a great team, and and so we enjoyed each other. We, we, we learned to play golf together. We did a lot of vacations together where we did that. And so, it's, to me, it's, uh, it's just the greatest thing is like being together. So, you ask, how do we handle the difficult times? Well, uh, they just weren't that difficult if you handle them together. Okay? Uh, and a couple of times uh, when I would be down, Brenda would just pick me up. I know a few times where she was struggling. I said, what can I do? She would say, I just have to try hard, you know. And she just is a, such a solid, tremendous individual. Uh, you can't imagine the strength that this woman has. Well, I can tell you one thing. When it, the day you get married, it does not become bliss. Don't expect it or you'll never make it to the second day. People are different and people are human. Make sure that you love each other or love your partner enough or more than you love yourself because there's going to be a lot of give and not much to take. You got to give. Oh, when you become married, you become, two people become one person. And you can't have one person not loving the other person and be one person. So uh, there's going to be hardships. You're going to get mad at each other. Walk in the other room until you cool down. <laughs> but don't... <laughs> You're not telling the story about the accident. No, you're not. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let him tell you, because you'll see just how much what I said is true. This lady is just brilliant. <laughs> no, when we were in college, uh, I had this old beat-up Studebaker. I worked nights at the bank building, and uh, she worked days for Conoco, she come by. I had to park my car about two or three blocks away when I started to work. She come by. We would visit a little while, and then she'd take me over to pick up my car. Okay, uh, and she had this pretty nice Studebaker large station wagon. Right Pulled up behind my car, let me out. I got it. I'm gonna take it back to the bank. I start to make the U-turn in the road, and the car's coming this way, and. So I had to stop and wait for the car to go by, right? Yeah. <laughs> and all of the, bam! <laughs> she ran into the back of me. <laughs> Didn't bother my old beat up Studebaker, but it knocked the front end out of that wagon she was driving. Oh, I was really angry. <laughs> I got out of the car, walked back to where she was, the window was rolled up, knocked on the window, She's standing straight ahead. Does it roll the window down? No. <laughs> she was not going to talk to me. I finally gave up, got in my car, went back to work. She went on home. By the time I got home, I cooled off. <laughs> the lady's brilliant. So there is not going to be smooth sailing. Just make sure you love him enough to. Go to the other room until he cools off. <laughs> but 
remember that you're one person and it has been the the hard times have not been more than the good times I can assure you and even the hard times you're growing closer uh, we're sadly we're running out of time so I just want to yeah I know yeah right there's there's one last question that I wanted to ask uh, we'll start with with you, uh, but just if you could give one piece of encouragement or, or one warning uh, slash encouragement, I guess, about marriage uh, to the teenager, what, what would you tell them? Wait. <laughs> but not just the obvious. Wait. Don't get in a hurry. Don't settle. Don't settle. I don't need to say another word, do I? Because y'all know what settle means. God has someone out there for you. Art and I used to work with the singles of this church, and I can't tell you how many of them across the board would come to our house and say, I want to get married. I'm tired of being single. And if we could ever get together on, okay, can you be content where you are? And they'd say yes. And if they could, and we'd say, okay, the Lord nets up to you. And time after time, as soon as they were content where they were, God brought the right person to them. So the four-letter word, wait. One of my husband's favorite scriptures is from Psalm 37, where it says, wait on the Lord, and he will bring it to pass. Amen. All right, bud, what's, what's one piece of advice you have for our teenagers? Well, that one is great, and, uh, and it is the best advice. The other is... Uh, it's not about me. Okay? It's not about me. Uh, one, of the, one of the things we see most about generations, the last few generations, is that people grow up being incredibly selfish because uh, the modern society says it's, it's all about you. It's, it's all about me. Everything is pointed to uh, you satisfying yourself. Well, if, that's, if you both of, of the partners in the marriage have that approach, it's about me, you will not make it. You have to care more about the other person. It has to be about them, not about you. I just tell you, many times, Brenda and I wound up someplace because I thought she wanted to go. I didn't. She thought I wanted to go. She didn't. Okay? That's what I mean. It's not about you. It's about her, guys. It's about her. All right? Same works for the ladies. It's about him. You've got to learn and share. Tell him when you don't want to go. Yeah, we're not, we don't read minds, okay? <laughs> strong, strong, weak hints don't work. Strict, strong hints don't work. Just say what you want, you know? And by the way, by the way, if you don't really want us to solve the problem, don't ask for our help. <laughs> We solve problems. You come and ask for our help, we're going to tell you. <laughs> so, so communication. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Very important. Well, thank you all for, for joining us. Yeah. I'd like to close us in a word of prayer. And, uh, and then we'll let them go ahead and. Oh, you're good. 
Awesome. So we'll, we'll pray, and then uh, if you guys could just kind of sit tight where you are, and uh, the guys that kind of helped Art out up to get up, if you could help getting him down and out, so that'd be great. Uh, but we'll let them exit first so they can, they can head on out. So let's, let's pray. Uh, Father, we just thank you for who you are and what you've done for us. Uh, just all the things that as we look back over our lives, just all the moments where, where you were there. You brought us through the, the tough times and you were there to work through the good times. Uh, so God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending your son Jesus for us uh, to die for us so that we can have a relationship with you. And I just thank you for these two couples that came tonight and just their wisdom that they were able to share with us. Uh, just ask that you bless them for their time that they, they gave tonight. And I pray for our students, God, that as, as they heard these words tonight, maybe wherever they're at uh, tonight, they heard something that, uh, that they needed to hear wherever they're at in their, their relationships uh, or maybe even in their thought process about what their future relationships might be. God, I just pray that we will all be honoring to you and everything that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Guys, can you help?